Yes, and welcome to the Afghan capital, Kabul. It's still a capital of great uncertainty. Weeks since the Taliban swept uh, to power, they now have what they described as a caretaker government, but it was a cabinet which was completely comprising Taliban, despite promises to make it inclusive. Now, the Taliban are telling us that the government is not yet complete. We're still waiting for their full agenda. What they plan to do is they reestablish their Islamic emirate, but with every day that passes, the rules which are handing down are restricting the lives of women and seeming to restrict the freedoms of a country and a people who grew used to new measures of freedom during the 20 years of international engagement here. And of course, that affects most the young generation, which came of age after the attacks of September 11. Educated Afghans, some of whom were supporting the Western initiatives here, but others supporting the Taliban and others still having different views. We're joined here by Obaidullah Bahir. He is the grandson of a well-known commander in Afghanistan. His father uh, was also uh, played a very important part in wars, uh, previous wars. And Obaidullah Bahir, when the attacks of September the 11th happened, your father was soon arrested and put in prison by the United States. What did you as a young man do? Well, I remember being a child and having childlike aloofness when the initial raid on the house happened. I remember uh, white people walking through the house, which wasn't very normal for us. And uh, everything of importance was taken away, including uh, my father. I saw a gun being pulled out on him. Uh, we were told he'd come back in a few hours after interrogation. But those hours turned into days, into months, into years, until we eventually gave up hope. I remember a member of the ICRC telling me that the only thing that we could do now was to give up hope because that was the only thing torturing us now. Um, and imagine uh, someone stripped off their father for six years, not having enough food to eat, uh, and watching videos of people in orange jumpsuits knowing that your father is going through the same torture program or actually the 190 odd people that were put through the specialized torture program was what my father was going through. Um, what do you expect that person's mindset to be like? And you first initially as a young man decided to fight and tra train, but then you took a completely different path. And when, fast forward, you're now a, a lecturer in transitional justice at the American University in Afghanistan, and you've decided to stay. What are your hopes now? Well, honestly, I feel like I'm climbing up the slippery uh, mountain with uh, the stones that I grab onto uh, falling one by one. So uh, the hope that I started off with uh, just keeps on becoming bleaker and bleaker um, because we had promises, because we thought that the Taliban themselves would understand the necessity and the requirement of government and the weight of it. But we just all we see is indifference and at times even arrogance. Uh, the inclusivity of the government wasn't insured. Inclusivity of genders, civil rights, civil liberties, all of those are things that we are giving up day by day. Um, and we feel like we've come out of one tyrannical system into another. And uh, Well, you're we friends with some of the young Talibs. Um, you also have connections to your father, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, who's still very close to the Taliban. What do you say to them? I say that there's still a chance. I say that the world has changed. You're not at, in the battlefronts anymore. Now you have a larger responsibility. You're not answerable to just your fighters. You're answerable to a whole generation of Afghans. Know that the world has changed and the more that you live in your own alternative reality, the worse it would get, the more anxious people would be. The more you ignore these people and their sentiments, the worse these demonstrations will get. And then you have the option of either silencing them with bullets, losing any chance at international recognition, or learning to reconcile with them, learning to have a dialogue. And that starts with when you accept that these people might know as much, even if not more. So if at the core of your ideology is that you are better, you're holier than thou, which is an ideology that is prevalent amongst the Taliban fighters, um, you cannot have a reconciled or a sustainable Afghan society. So now is the ch time to change and morph into the new role that has been given to them.